All right, let's get right to it here. My first guest tonight is just on fire, receiving national attention and a big endorsement from President Trump for her bid for Maryland's 7th Congressional District, a seat that was once held for years by the late Elijah Cummings, Republican Kim Klasik joining me now. And uh, Kim, welcome to Real America. You are on fire. That's all I can say about this campaign. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. So let's talk about your campaign. We're going to show one of your ads in a minute that uh, has just millions of views. And the second I saw it a few weeks ago where you are just walking through like a boss lady through the streets of Baltimore and showing how this district has been neglected by Washington for decades. I mean, I haven't seen an ad like that in a while. You're calling them out on the left. And obviously, you've probably received a lot of hate from it. Uh, let's talk about that ad before we get to it and give me some of the responses you've been receiving from not only the constituents there, but also from the left in your bid for Congress. Absolutely. So I, I did want to point out, you know, the Democrats uh, have proven to not really care uh, about black lives, especially the black lives in Baltimore City. I mean, as you saw, those dilapidated buildings, they've been there for decades. And it's been nothing but Democrats in control for over 50 years. If you look at our education system, we have 13 high schools uh, where students are graduating, unable to do basic math. Um, and then you can tell the crime and violence for the past five years, we've had over 300 murders annually in a, a, a city that has a population of over only 600,000 people. Um, so we have 10 times the national average as far as our murder rate. So I, I do believe that Democrats do not care about black lives. And, you know, that campaign ad was just pointing out the truth. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your background. Fill folks in, tell the nation who you are, where you're from, and kind of your experiences that you think you can take to Washington and fight for the regular working class folks in Baltimore. Yeah, so the past eight years, uh, I've been working on my nonprofit. It's workforce development. I helped over 200 women become gainfully employed. 30% went on to be financially independent. So I have experience basically in getting people employed in Baltimore City. Um, and that's what it's all about, you know, bringing in career opportunities. Um, I was talking about bringing in the biotech industry uh, through our Baltimore City port. Uh, we used to be a manufacturing powerhouse. I think we can bring that back. We can do apprenticeship programs through the high schools. And, you know, President Trump and his administration are on board. You know, you've got the Opportunity Zones. Uh, you know, his administration has already put in $75 billion in some of these neglected cities that Democrats have neglected for years. Um, and they want to do the same also in Baltimore City. So uh, that's what I'm about. And I think I can get it done. You know, Kimberly, when you say that stuff about what this administration has done for the black community just in a short span. We're talking three and a half years, right? And you look at the Obama administration, which it was historic that this nation finally, and I think long overdue, elected a black man to the highest office. It should have come sooner. Um, but yet nothing was done in eight years. And then Joe Biden sat there a heartbeat away from the top spot and now is running and claiming that he can fix all the problems. Why didn't he lean over into Mr. Obama's ear and whisper his great ideas to help the black community, to help cities like Baltimore. Uh, but this president gets in with a stroke of a pen and some other folks he brings in, Tim Scott and, and people like you, and say, let's get these opportunity zones going, let's refurbish these communities and bring it back to the people. Why wasn't this done before? Didn't it just infuriate you watching this, living there and seeing this happen? Absolutely. And for Joe Biden, I mean, he's been in politics for almost 50 years now. Uh, all we hear about is there is systemic racism, and, and that is the reason why so many black people can't get ahead. But if that's the truth and he's been there all this time, why hasn't he changed any of those policies? Why didn't he change or, or point out these policies to President Obama? Um, I think many black people thought that President Obama would tackle uh, the prison reform or, or criminal justice. He didn't do that. That was President Trump that did that. Uh, and now even President Trump pushed uh, the First Step Act. We have a lot of people coming out of incarceration uh, that needs those skills. They need that technology training uh, so they can go and get real careers. So President Trump has done so much more for the black community uh, than President Obama and Joe Biden after almost 50 years. And uh, Kimberly, doesn't it just make you hot under the collar when the media never can give any praise to the Trump administration and what they have done for the black community and this country as a whole? You just mentioned how many things that I think should be praised uh, constantly, especially when any black leaders are talking about how the black community has been treated by the federal government over the past several decades when it comes to ways of funds and whatnot. But all of a sudden you have President Trump come in, who the Democrats and a lot of the mainstream media have labeled a racist, but yet he signs, like you said, first step. 
He's pardoning people from prison. He, uh, let's forget, not forget, the disastrous 1994 crime bill that Joe Biden, I believe, was a co-author of, that Bill Clinton signed off on, which incarcerated black and brown people for two to three times longer sentences, and Joe was behind it. Let's not forget his comment about turning schools into jungles if we had to integrate them, uh, but yet he's going to help the black community. I, I don't think Americans are this stupid, and I think you have one hell of a chance of taking this home. When is the last time, if ever, the 7th District uh, in Maryland was held by a Republican? Because obviously, Mr. Cummings, the late Elijah Cummings, was in there for a long time. So has it ever been held by a Republican? No, and, and this district was redrawn in 2013. Uh, we've got a lot of gerrymandered districts here in Maryland. Uh, so I would be the first Republican and the first uh, woman. Uh, in this seat. And so hopefully people will uh, make a change and understand, you know, having one party mob rule for so long, uh, we're dealing with a lot of corruption here. You know, our mayor was indicted last year for pay to play. And so people that say we got problems within the police department, um, any any police department can have problems in a city where the entire uh, the city hall mayor, everyone's office is corrupt as well. So, you know, we've got to make some changes here in Baltimore. And I hope people understand that my opponent was actually in the seat prior to Congressman Cummings. Uh, and Fume was here from 1987 to 1996. And he also signed on to that 1994 crime bill. And we see the results of that here on the ground. So, yes, we sure uh, do. And not just in that city, Atlanta, Chicago, St. Louis, we see it all across the nation in major cities. Um, we were talking earlier about this campaign ad. I know you've made several, but the one I'm speaking of is where you are just stomping through town, bringing up the failures of past administrations and elected officials on the left that have put your city in ruins. And I want to take a quick pause from the discussion just to run this ad real quick so folks can see a little bit more of you, who you are, and what you're about in this ad because I think it's so powerful. Do you care about black lives? The people that run Baltimore don't. I can prove it. Walk with me. They don't want you to see this. I'm Kim Klasik. This is Baltimore, the real Baltimore. This is the reality for black people every single day. Crumbling infrastructure, abandoned homes, poverty, and crime. Baltimore has been run by the Democrat Party for 53 years. What is the result of their decades of leadership? Baltimore is one of the top five most dangerous cities in America. The murder rate in Baltimore is 10 times the US average. The Baltimore poverty rate is over 20%. Homicide, drug, and alcohol deaths are skyrocketing in our city. Do you believe Black Lives Matter? I do. The vast majority of crime in Baltimore is perpetrated against Black people, who make up 60% of the population. So why don't we care about our community? The Democrat Party have betrayed the Black people of Baltimore. If the politicians walk the streets like I do, they would see exactly how their policies and corruption affects us. If they don't want to see it, they don't want you to see this. Go to any Baltimore neighborhood and ask this question. Do you want to defund the police? No. No. Absolutely not. I had three sons killed in Baltimore City. And I think if we defund the police office, it's going to be worse than that. So no, I'm opposed to that. What are you going to defund the police for? Why? How do you defend your city? your community. Families are losing people. It's not just Baltimore. The worst place for a black person to live in America is a Democrat-controlled city. It's 2020. Name a blue city where black people's lives have gotten better. Try. I'll wait. Look at this. How are children supposed to live here and play here? <music> Democrats think black people are stupid. They think they can control us forever that we won't demand better and that we'll keep voting for them forever, despite what they've done to our families and our community. Are they right? I'm Kim Klasik and I'm running for Congress because I actually care about black lives. All black lives matter. Our communities matter. Baltimore matters. And black people don't have to vote Democrat. Wow. Kim, only one word comes to mind, and uh, I know the younger generation uses it all the time. I'm over 40. 
That ad right there, savage. I mean, you just went after, is there anybody that you didn't call out in that thing? I love it. We wish you the best of luck. On a final note here, uh, I want to point out, and I bet you find this interesting as I do, that the party of tolerance, the party that's supposed to be all for equality, um, puts up a 74-year-old, known to make racist statements, white man, and the Republican Party, I believe, when it comes to congressional and Senate seats and local uh, races, have more women, more minorities, and more millennials running for office in 2020 than the left. Pretty interesting, isn't it? No, it is, absolutely. And, and people should know we've got 21 people of color uh, running as a Republican for Congress across uh, the country. It's historic numbers. You know, it was President Trump that reached out that olive branch saying, basically, what do you have to lose? I remember. Like, yeah, that made a lot of people think about, you know, our situation. What do we have to lose? Why are we continuing to vote for Democrats? Uh, many of us have grown up in the church. We are conservatives. And I gl I'm glad to get back to the Frederick Douglass way of life. All right. Kim Klasick running for the uh, 7th District in Maryland. We wish you the best of luck. Keep it up. Uh, keep the pressure on. And, man, I cannot wait to see what you do when you get to Washington. Thank you so much. Thank you.